Here I've got a nice integral that was suggested to me by the integral suggester. So our final goal is to find the integral from zero to infinity of the log of x to the fourth plus one over x squared plus one. And we're gonna develop a pretty strong tool which will allow us to evaluate this quite easily. And that's the following integral identity. So we've got the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of x squared plus alpha over x squared plus one equals pi times the natural log of one plus the square root of alpha. So this only holds for certain values of alpha in the complex numbers, in fact, it depends on the real part of alpha. I won't be going into exactly what the real part of alpha must be, but if you want to post in the comments about the restriction on alpha, that would be great. Okay, so let's jump into proving this tool or maybe deriving the identity for this tool. Okay, so I'm going to start by changing this single integral into a double integral, and I'll do that as follows. So I'll recognize the integrand as the natural log of x squared times y plus alpha over x squared plus 1, where we've evaluated this between 0 and 1. That's not exactly right though. If we evaluate this at one, we obviously get the integrand here. But if we evaluate this at zero, we pick up the natural log of alpha in the numerator. So since it's the lower bound, that is connected to a minus sign. So we can fix that by subtracting a copy of the natural log of alpha over x squared plus one. And then this is all within the integral. Okay, so just to reiterate what happened, I added and subtracted this term, but the subtraction of this term comes into this bound of our zeroth integral here. That should have been a plus. And then evaluating at one gives us back to what we have. So evaluating at one gives us this, evaluating at zero cancels with that. Okay, I think we're good to go now. Next up, I'll take the derivative of this with respect to y and change it from what I like to think of as a zeroth integral to a first integral. So let's see what that gives us. So we'll have the integral from zero to infinity and then the integral from zero to one. Now taking the derivative of this with respect to y gives us an x squared in the numerator by the chain rule. And then in the denominator, we'll have an x squared plus one and then an x squared y plus alpha. And then we've got here dy and then dx. Okay, nice. And then we've got this single integral from what's left over, which is the natural log of alpha times the integral from zero to infinity of one over x squared plus one dx. Okay, so we've got a long road ahead of us. So I'm going to just write down the value for some standard integrals. And I think this is one that's standard. So the integral from zero to infinity of one over x squared plus one is in fact equal to pi over two. So you can see that because you get an inverse tangent as the antiderivative. Pushing the argument to infinity gives you pi over two. Plugging in zero gives us zero. So that's why we get pi over two there. Okay. Then next up, we'd like to do a partial fraction decomposition on this guy right here. And again, since we've got a long road ahead of us, I'll write down what this partial fraction decomposition is just to save us time. So we've got the integral from zero to infinity and then the integral from zero to one. And then this is gonna turn into one over y minus alpha and then one over x squared plus one. So if you're doing the partial fraction decomposition, you know that you should get a constant over x squared plus one and another constant over x squared times y plus alpha. Here we're thinking about x as being our variable, so y and alpha are our constants with respect to this partial fraction decomposition. So this one over y minus alpha is the coefficient in that partial fraction decomposition. Okay, so anyway, and then we'll have 
minus alpha over y minus alpha, and then the next term, one over x squared y plus alpha, and then this is gonna be dy by, and then dx. Okay, so there's my partial fraction decomposition. And then I can bring this down, integrate it, and that gives me pi halves times the natural log. And here I should really put the modulus of alpha, keeping in mind that alpha may be a complex number. So let's do that. We've got the modulus of alpha up there as well. Okay, and I guess one more time up here. Okay, so now where can we go from here? Well, maybe from here, we'll like to change the bounds of integration. Instead of dy dx, we'll change it dx dy, and then also start integrating. Okay, I'm running out of room here, so let's maybe write our next step at the top of the next board. So I've brought where we ended on the last board to the top, and then I've also changed the order of integration and pulled everything out of the innermost integral as possible. So here I could pull out a one over y minus alpha. Here I could pull out an alpha over y times y minus alpha. And that actually leaves me with something different in here. In fact, it leaves me with something like x squared plus alpha over y. And it's actually important to do that because now we can think about this alpha over y as the square root of alpha over y quantity squared. And then that's another standard integral that we can look up the value for easily and thus we won't derive here. Okay, and then we've got this last term which kind of hangs on, which is this pi over 2 times the natural log of the modulus of alpha. Okay, now, now we're ready to go. Let's notice that this was pi over 2 on the last board, so it's pi over 2 on this board. And then this integral as well has a standard form like I just talked about. In this case, it's pi over 2 times the square root of alpha over y or sorry, y over alpha. Okay, so now let's see what we have. We can factor a pi over two out of this entire thing. That leaves me with pi halves, and then I'll have the integral from zero to one of one over y minus alpha dy. So that's this first term. And then I'll have minus the integral from zero to one of, this one's a little bit trickier, Notice I've got an alpha in the numerator, a square root of alpha in the denominator, so that leaves me with a square root of alpha in the numerator. Then I've got a square root of y in the numerator, a y in the denominator, that leaves me with a square root of y in the denominator, then a y minus alpha, and then this is dy. And then finally, this last term, which is natural log of modulus of alpha. So we're good to go there. Okay, so now we need to tackle this middle integral. Why do I say that? Well, that's because this one is maybe the trickiest of all that's, re all that's left. Before we do that, let's maybe pull the square root of alpha out so we can just think about that innermost integral with a numerator of one or a unit numerator. Okay, so let's expand this. Um, and work on that for a couple of steps and then move on after we got it. Okay, so let's see. I'd like to maybe do a substitution here. Let's set u equal to the square root of y. That tells me that u squared equals um, y, which tells me that dy is equal to 2u du. Now the bounds of integration don't change because when y is zero, u is zero, and when y is one, u is one. So that's good, that just gives me the following. So our dy is 2u du, so that's gonna give me the integral from zero to one of 2u du in the numerator from this. And then y is u, so we've got u, and then we've got u squared minus alpha in the denominator. Okay, so it's something that looks like that. But now notice that these u's cancel, and then we've got the integral from zero to one of two over u squared minus alpha. And I hate to continue to do this, but this is another standard integral, so we'll just write down its value. And the value of this one is equal to one over the square root of alpha. 
and then we have the natural log of the modulus of one minus root alpha over one plus root alpha. So you can get that by, again, doing a partial fraction decomposition, and you end up with something which is pretty straightforward. Okay, so now this first integral is quite simple, so we can do that in the margin, if you will. And let's see what we get for that. So here we'll have the natural log of y minus alpha evaluated from zero to one. So that's gonna give us the natural log of one minus alpha minus the natural log of modulus of alpha. Okay, so we'll take this term down and then we will cancel this term with the one that's hanging over there. So that's actually a nice simplification. Okay, so let's see where that leaves us. We have a pi halves over the whole thing, and then we'll have this natural log of modulus one minus alpha here. And then we've got a one over root alpha, then this root alpha here, those will cancel. So we have minus the natural log of one minus root alpha, and then plus natural log of one plus root alpha. And you might say, well, where did that come from? That came from using logarithm rules to simplify this. Okay, but now we'd like to do one more thing, and that is further use logarithm rules to combine these. So we can combine these two into a quotient. We'll have one minus alpha over one minus the square root of alpha. That turns into the natural log of one plus the square root of alpha. But now adding that to its like term over there, we'll cancel the denominator here and we'll have pi times the natural log of one plus square root of alpha, which is exactly what our goal said over here, or maybe our tool over here said. Okay, so now that we've got this powerful tool all sorted out, let's apply it to our problem. We just got done developing this tool, which albeit is a little bit sketchy because definitely this wouldn't work for all values of alpha. But I kind of think that's the spirit of problems like this is just to kind of play it fast and loose. And if you're doing something for real, you would probably want to check it a little bit more carefully. Okay, so anyway, let's get to the finishing step. I want to first start by factoring this x to the fourth plus one using complex numbers. So that should be motivated by the fact that we have this tool here. Okay, so I've got this will be the integral from zero up to infinity, natural log of x to the squared plus one, sorry, i, x squared minus i over x squared plus one dx. Okay, notice if you multiply these out in here, you get exactly x to the fourth plus one, so that checks out. And then we can split this using the sum rule for the natural logarithm into two integrals. So we've got the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of x squared plus i over x squared plus one um, dx plus the integral from zero to infinity of the natural log of x squared minus i over x squared plus one dx. But this is exactly two special cases of our tool. So this first case is when alpha equals i, and the second case is when alpha equals negative i. Okay, so let's see what we get there. So we'll have a pi for each of them. So I'll factor that out of the entire thing. And then I'll have the natural log of one plus the square root of i here, and then plus the natural log of one plus the square root of minus i here. And I guess importantly, these are within the modulus, so that we're actually taking the natural log of a positive real number, and so everything makes sense. Okay, cool. Now we can combine these and we'd maybe like to combine these using the logarithm rule for a sum, but before we do that, we probably also like to calculate this kind of in its maybe more standard form. 
So let's do a little bit of a calculation over here. And some of this is gonna rely on the square root of i and its value. But there are a bunch of videos on the internet about the square root of i, and you can do something similar for the square root of minus i. We're taking the so-called principal value here, just FYI. So the square root of i is equal to one over root two, one plus i. The short of this is that i equals e to the i pi over two in polar form. And then if you square root this, it's like raising this to the half power, which would give us e to the i pi over four, which gives you that when you write it back in rectangular form. Furthermore, the square root of minus i will be equal to one over root two, and then one minus i. So we've got something like that. So putting that into this, we'll have the natural log of the modulus of, let's see, maybe it's best to think about this one as root two over root two, just to give ourselves a common denominator. So root two over root two. Now we can add the real parts, and well, we only have one imaginary part. So let's see, that's gonna be one plus root two over root two plus i over root two. That's what we get when we simplify this. And then over here, we'll have the natural log of one plus root two over root two, and then minus i over root two. Great. But let's maybe do a calculation of the product over to the right of that purple line just to save time. So we've got this situation where we combine these two sums of logs together and we get a product of these two arguments of the log. So since we've got a difference of squares here with the i, we'll actually end up with this squared plus this squared. So let's see, that's gonna be one plus the square root of two squared over the square root of two squared, which is just two and then we'll have plus one half. Again, that's this guy right here times this guy right here. Okay, but let's see, that's gonna give us something like one plus two plus two root two over two plus one over two when we do all that simplification. So one plus two plus one is four over two, that's two, so we get two plus root two. Okay, so just to reiterate, that's the product of these two, but now we can push these together and we'll have the natural log of the product of those two, and that brings us to our final answer, which is pi times the natural log of two plus root two. Now maybe before we're done with the video, I'd like to point out that if you plug this into Mathematica, you get an equal answer, but it has a slightly different form. And the slightly different form is the following, pi over two times the natural log of six plus four root two. And these numbers may not see that seem the same, but notice if we square the inside here, we can also put a half out because of logarithm rules, but squaring the inside here gives us six plus four times root two. So I think maybe there's some sort of calculation that Mathematica is doing that is slightly different than the one we are doing. So if anyone has any sort of ideas for how Mathematica goes about computing this and why they get this answer instead of this answer, maybe post it in the comments. And that's a good place to stop.